Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 1951 English fantasy film Pandora and the Flying Dutchman. This is a film by director Albert Lewin. It stars Ava Gardner and James Mason. This year I've been on a real James Mason bent. He is just like a tremendous actor, so filled with intensity, mystery, and charisma as an actor. But for now, I'm so excited to watch Pandora and the Flying Dutchman. Um, I believe Martin Scorsese said that Pandora and the Flying Dutchman is one of the most visually sumptuous films that he remembers from growing up. That makes sense given the cinematographer of this film, Jack Cardiff. Jack Cardiff, you may know from his collaborations with Powell and Pressburger on such films as <laughs> Matter of Life and Death, Black Narcissus, <laughs> The Red Shoes. <laughs> so I'm excited. Needless to say, I'm hype. So yeah. Let's watch Pandora and the Flying Dutchman. James Mason getting higher billing than Ava Gardner. Wow. Photograph by the Jack Cardiff. <laughs> Jack Cardiff and Bells. Although this does not seem like it was shot in a studio. The fishermen. We've been afraid they would. Afraid they wouldn't. Just splendid Technicolor. A bit faded, a bit faded, but it looks so good. Wow, that's dark. Audience is back in the late 40s and early 50s, man. They were prepared for some rough shit. I love seeing flamenco in film. It's like a, a dancing style that lends itself so much to like storytelling, so much to like passion and emotion has very clear starts and stops and progressions in it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful style for film. And I love the chilliness of Ava Gardner's character. This is the kind of contrast that the film is setting up in order to explore later on the cold disposition versus the hot disposition. With Reggie Demarest, who was drinking. Hey, it's it's another Paul and Pressburger actor. Does Ava Gardner remind me of? She looks like a little bit like uh, an actress that's been featured on this channel, which is I'm gonna get myself in trouble saying that because I also compare her very very much to Barbara Stanwyck, and I don't think people would say that Barbara Stanwyck and Ava Gardner very much look alike. But um, what's her name? Uh, Maddie Weinstein? She was in... Maddie? Is it Maddie Weinstein? Madeline Weinstein? She was in, um, Beach Rats. Can it be that long? I love the contrast between hot and cold in this. The contrast between the flamenco versus the ballad on the on the piano. Comparing and contrasting the fire of passion. Not Whether it's reveal or it's um, it's it's temperance, no, it's tempering. Please don't drink any more tonight. I've been there, you know. You can't get someone. Sometimes the only way to demonstrate your passion is to drink yourself to death, and accuse them with that. He's dead. Oh Jesus! Is the class been poisoned? Did she do it? Is this a Black Widow sort of situation? Pandora. I'll walk back to the hotel. God! Look at that! Jesus! Pandora. Do you think what Reggie did was it because he found out about us? You don't get a lot of opportunities to see an overwhelming blue shot. But that's an overwhelming blue shot. Like, just purely monochromatic, but still with so much intensity in it. So much variety just by the landscape, the foregrounding, and the backgrounding. Oh my gosh. So we've established to a certain degree that Pandora has an affinity or a kind of closeness to death. The situations she finds herself in with these men um, circle around death, or per in some cases, as with Mary Scoring's character, directly confront death. And so there, uh, for me, there's this question of, is her character a black widow? Is she seeking out the deaths of others? Or is this something that's internal that she's, she is placed so in such close proximity to death because it's something that she desires for herself? Mm -hmm. 
just this shine of her like yellow silk fabric in that blue. Wow. You know, there are lots of girls who think that a fellow who can build and drive a racing car is pretty romantic. Yeah, a lot of images of elevation again. Janet, the sea level with the yacht and the height of the cliff. I lie awake at night wondering what I can do to make you believe how much I love you. What would you do for me, Stephen? God, just the little reflection in her eyes. Jesus. Anything. It's so, so, so rare that I see a filmmaker and a cinematographer working out of blues like this. This is so strange. It's it's like a calming color. It's not really a color I associate with romance or with a fantasy film. There's such a strange experience of watching it utilized so intensely in this film. If I would ask you, Stephen, would you push your car off this cliff into the sea? Do it. Do it, Stephen. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah! Who but Ava Gardner? Jesus. Oh, my God. There's something so surreal about capturing all of this intensity. Oh my god, this shot. Oh my god. When do you want to marry me, Stephen? Oh. There's something so surreal about capturing all this intensity of emotion within this day of the third month. The scope of this serene blue. It's a wonderful day and I shall always remember it. On the it's haunting. If you still want me, that is. Now, the legend says the Flying Dutchman is allowed to land once in seven years to look for the woman who can redeem him. Redeem him from what? His curse. She's going to witness James Mason and Day's going to break. They're going to keep all of this subdued until she actually meets the Flying Dutchman. But this is a rare find because of the inscription. Wow, 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 wow. The text on this tablet corroborates a passage in the Bible from the Book of Kings. And her passion being on display here, amongst all of these immovable objects, these statues, these vestiges of lost civilizations, the remnants of people long forgotten. Pandora! Hello there! Oh, hi there on deck! Yeah, so the first time she's uh, colored in warmth or in contrast to the blue now, or in greater contrast to the blue, um, is her approaching the Dutchman, I'm, I'm supposing, or James Mason. Oh, James! James, you know I love you. James, I love your back. I love your mystery. I love your presence. I love your denial. James Mason, to me, is on a, on a level like... Philip Seymour Hoffman, where he's an actor who clearly gives so much. There's so much that he's apparently doing and is good at. And he's simultaneously an actor that's so mysterious that we don't have any idea what's going on. Hello. It's actually presented really blandly in the cinematography here. But that intensity of his gaze. The dressing room is to your right, you'll find towels there. He's like not inviting to her. That makes sense to me. He's not perplexed or bewitched by her. He's like annoyed. I'm Pandora Reynolds. The same <laughs> shot. The same shot. Ice My cold. Hendrik van der Zee. Oh, you're Dutch. But I could have posed for this painting. What the hell? It's her, it's his, like, Greek love or whatever. It's still more remarkable that I painted her as Pandora. Oh, that makes the sense. Of the gods. That connection, I, did, I didn't even make that connection. Pandora Reynolds of Indianapolis and Points East. I'm not interested in mythology. <laughs> well, she is American. <laughs> so. Well, perhaps you've cut my picture out of a magazine. This is an example, I'd say, of the kind of um, proscenium way that Cardiff shoots a scene. 
framing Pandora within Henrik's arm. But I have the advantage of an extraordinary model. It's Portrait really out of fire. He's gonna paint her over the next five days, and then they're gonna die. You're not the flying Dutchman, Mr. Van Der Zee, are you? At any rate, he isn't flying away from here for some time. Oh He's my to God! Tomorrow evening. And I like all of these kind of like artistic disciplines that are being portrayed in this. Kind of like in Portrait of Lady on Fire as well. But there, there's the dance, there's the piano, there's singing, there's painting. And in more abstract ways, there's the uh, fabrication of the race car and the study of um, ancient cultures uh, and anthropology. Oh, are we going to see her come down? That'd be beautiful. As much as I was expecting us to see James Mason going up, it'd be much better to see her coming down. Slowly, love, slowly! Sense of doom took hold of me. <laughs> having seen... <laughs> having seen... <laughs> having seen James Mason in... Uh, what is it? The Man in Grey? The Lady in Grey? And in That Wicked Women? Having seen him in, like, period garb? Still, I don't think this was the best selection for him. This face that I had yearned with one bloody blow, I killed all that I loved on God's earth. It was still her face. And this is the reverse framing of the shot that we saw earlier with uh, with Pandora and with Steven. So, a, a repeat image of Pandora Supine as explored in Niagara. This seduction of the woman lying down, but also the suggestion of death. I knew without any doubt that what the voice told me was true. This My section blows. Not been All of this antiquated explanation of backstory and stuff. I get that it's not a familiar story to an audience in the 1950s, but I had man, backstories galore. Dream would be forgotten in the morning as vapors vanish in the rising sun. There was no one to be seen, no watch on deck. Was I alone? Unseen hands obeyed my thought. Hmm. This is an aspect in the script where I think it had issues reconciling uh, adaptation, trying to present a written text in a filmic manner. I think they went too far in the direction of the literary aspect. If only tonally, because the rest of the movie doesn't really prime you for this kind of specific language. Do you think that she... I cannot tell. She must be willing to die. What's wrong uh, with you two philosophers standing these here? Kind the of, these kind of couples always kind of darken your social circles. Chiro had returned. Juan Montalvo, the greatest matador of all Spain. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You could see, actually see in the wider shot, she was actually worried. Montalvo's mother had abandoned her gypsy tribe to marry Juan's father. She did not approve of her son's profession and was full of dark forebodings about his destiny. She did not like what she saw in the cards concerning her son and his foreign friends. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> and again, we get this kind of contrast of like uh, fire and coolness, of like passion and denial. Death does not mean death. It means transformation, etc., etc. You see, I do? it's called Pandora the Flying Dutchman. Dutch angle shots are not a moral failing. Look at Jack Card if you use them. The world which <laughs> Look at the depth of that shot. Us, Just tremendous. Dreams. It's a poem about the sea. I know a great deal about the sea. You love the sea? Uh, n no, not really. <laughs> huh. 
Is Montalbo going to kill them both? Hmm. Another possibility. Why are you so far away from me? No idea the things I've imagined myself saying to you. Or doing to you. Everyone said that the measure of love is what one is willing to give up for it. What would you give up? Your life, for instance? Only my life. Only my life. Yes, I would. This sort of thing disgusts me. You seem to have forgotten that you're engaged to marry Stephen Cameron. What makes you imagine that I'd be willing to betray him? The infection of your treachery? I'm immune uh. to that sort of disease. Suggestion detestable, and I despise you for making it. <laughs> I hate you. Please go away. On September the 3rd is the date also of my departure. Yeesh. Devastating. You live your whole life big hot. You fall in love with one dude, and he just completely rejects you? Devastating. <laughs> I have the honor, senorita, to pay my addresses to you. You will be Senora Montalvo. I wonder if there's like a color story being told in the way that Pandora relates to her suitors. Um, but you just met Stephen Cameron. So right now she's matching Montalvo. And so they're, they're matching in their color, both wearing black and pink, but she also has those, like, red earrings to perhaps suggest envy. I'm actually wondering if, um, it's, it's a very strange color choice, but this is a movie that's, like, utilizing, like, interesting color choices intentionally. I wonder if her, um, like, dominant love color in this movie is actually being portrayed as yellow. There's, like, the, uh, there's the cape that she wears with a yellow accent when she first goes out to meet Henrik. When she first confesses her love to Henrik, she's wearing yellow. And it's like um like a color or an accent in contrast to the circumstances, the instances in which she interacts with Henrik, that she always meets him in night in nighttime when uh like the world is consumed by blue. So there's like the traditional colors that people would associate with uh, with love or with fidelity that uh, that she wears with the suitors that they they believe signals her affections for them and then there's like the true colors she wears with Henrik wedding dresses when it is the moment you will not go to the church it was the eve of Montalvo's appearance in the bullring. It like strains me a that little bit to see so much blue presented in this movie, but like thematically I kind of understand it that blue in the nighttime represents um the atmosphere, the demeanor of Henrik um de van der Zee. And it's kind of like in contrast with the fiery passion of her other lovers or of her other suitors that Montalvo has like the red of the, the matador, that uh, Steven has the flames of, of, his, um, of his race car. And in contrast to that, Henrik has the blue. It's just an awesome shot, which is the rolling camera. This is like something that like uh, Hitchcock will steal for, uh, for Psycho. Now rise, rise, Henrik. This is a good swerve, by the way. I've like talked over it completely, but this is a really great swerve for an audience who is expecting uh, Henrik to stay alive for the duration of the film, especially given the um, mystic properties around his his backstory that he's meant to be immortal. And uh, it's an interesting kind of setup as well. Um, and he cleans the knife with the with a yellow handkerchief, the yellow representing uh, Pandora's true feelings. But um, the knife is a repeated object in this movie to uh, um, to to signify like not death specifically, but jealousy. the The knife was used by Henrik or by the Flying Dutchman to show his his jealousy and his his suspicion cast against his wife. And now it's used by Montalvo, acting out of a fit of jealousy. Dude really is a flying Dutchman! 
it's a Marvel origin story. Time enough. Time enough for her. Just wearing the cape with the yellow accent again. That was a great shot. It was only for a second, but I love that. I love the aspects of female desire that are portrayed in this movie. I don't think it's like as intense as I'd like it to be, but this movie presents much more parody in terms of desire between the two the two lovers than most movies. Like her this movie is not about his desire. It's not forefronting his desire. It's forefronting hers and how much she is extending herself on his behalf, how much she is making herself vulnerable, what transformation she is undergoing. What strange dream have you had to bring you here at this time of night? It's a really weird feeling I'm getting inside of myself. I don't know how to explain it. I'll go over it once the movie's done. We'll see where the movie goes. But this love, this devotion she has for Henrik is a very, very strange feeling. I'm not sure what it feels like. I guess it's contingent on the idea that they're both going to die, that she's in love with or is trying to court death, or an avatar for death. So in that way, it's like very beautiful portrait of love and desire for her, um, for her character, but it also feels mournful. It feels like because the, you know, the binding of Isaac kind of situation that she has to undergo, the trial that she has to undergo, is to give her life in order to demonstrate her love for him, and that is. I think this is what this movie is making clear, or really kind of realizing the stakes and the gravity for is that it's like that's not like a love that's born of mania that's a different kind of love almost a love that is um a kind of death in itself and perhaps an ego death but some sort of joining with 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 death with emptiness and Pandora's wearing the green that um, if the body had been discovered. kind of relates to her relationship with Montalvo, that he has no a jealous love for her. It. No one except Pandora. Is it going to be her love that kills him with his yellow cape? He, he thinks he has the pink or the red cape, but he actually has the yellow cape, and the yellow cape will get him gored. In terms of the contrasting color schemes, or the um, complementary color schemes, if her relationship with Henrik is signified by blue and yellow, her relationship with uh, with Montalvo is signified by green and red, or green and pink. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And his his uh his matador costume is being ripped, and the blue is revealing the yellow underneath. It's a nice little touch. I don't know if that's intentional. That's just the way I'm reading it, though. Or I don't know if that's its intention. Vaya por ustedes. Oh, the entire crowd's looking at him. He's looking at her. She's looking. She's looking at. Henrik. Isn't that just what love is? God. Oh god. The charm didn't work. This is a, like a very haunting love story. It's very, very strange feeling. Because love's proximity to death in this movie. It's such a fixation. Uh. I don't know how to explain it. You usually associate movies about love, love stories, with love as being the most cherished, the most important um, virtue in the world. But this is 
associating love so, so strongly with death that it becomes a story about about sacrifice, about wasting away, about, like, terminal care. It almost feels like, um, in a way, it feels like like the notebook. I don't really mean it feels like the notebook, but I mean it feels like a story about love that's caring for um, a dying loved one. This movie feels like being terminally ill. And it's making me feel very strange because that's also what love feels like in a way. But it's such a different presentation of what love is than most other movies. Um, she went from being hysterical and manic and um, vengeful against the people who loved her to being to being like sacrificial to like whittling herself down um to nothing but like but but service and compliance to Henrik and that sounds really scary that sounds like um that sounds like manipulation or like that sounds like what happens when you're in an abusive relationship or a cult but in a way that is what love is it's not the most romantic depiction of love. It's not the most fulfilling. All right, but it is an incredibly in stark is and like specific yes, presentation of what love is. Hendrik. What do you know about him? Who is he really? Sorry, Hendrik. Hendrik. Van der Zee means from the sea. Ever since that day, you were reading that old manuscript again. I thought it meant from the soul. That's Zayla, not <laughs> Zay. I remember that evening, but it wasn't anything. You're exciting yourself without the least reason. There's, so many There's the yellow see. accent, the I yellow uh, corsage. That's one way of going out of your mind. The first night when I swam out to his yacht, there wasn't any crew on board. The ship seemed to be making itself ready for sailing. Ah, oh, haunting. In a way, it feels like... It doesn't feel like romantic love. It feels like devotion. I'm probably being geared that way towards this ending and this uh, hit chant that's being sung. But it sounds... It, it, it feels like a religious devotion. It feels like donning a habit or taking a... Else I've never told anyone because no one would believe it. Um, taking a... Uh, taking a vow. What's that? He was killed. And he came back to life. Montalvo killed him the night before the bullfight. Stabbed him to death in his room. The hotel. It's it's like a religious experience. He must have been delirious. She's like coming to um, religious or mystical or like metaphysical knowledge. Ahead. She's recognizing a world or a faith that is greater than her previous perception of the world. What are you keeping from me, Jeffrey? Help me, Jeffrey. Please help me. It's a very, very strange feeling movie. I'll die if I don't see him again. It's like such an interesting narrative thrust to watch this beautiful, beautiful woman who commands everything of the world give up everything for this man and not because she's being manipulated to, not because she... Not because he is leading her down this path. There's an element of fate to it, sure. But she is, like, giving herself over. And it's a scary thing to watch. But it's, like, an overwhelming... Um, capitulation to a... a a a version a manifestation of love yeah and she approaches him once again adorned in white she's cast everything off jesus Hello. jesus i thought then that i might see you again it's a supernatural love it's haunting it's overwhelming this i will stress this may not be your experience watching this movie this is this is just what i'm experiencing watching this movie from the original this time i must have made a hundred sketches of you it's like hanging 
in my throat the presentation of love that this movie is is showing. It's beautiful. It's like you, I think. Is this the woman of his story? <laughs> okay, but he wouldn't have a portrait. He wouldn't have a photo portrait of her from the 16th century. We were man and wife. Separated for centuries and meeting again. The moment I saw you, I knew it. You'd come back Okay, to me. I'm into their chemistry again. Okay, so you tried to make me hate you. Tonight you've come to me, knowing you'll die for it. I'm not afraid. You told me once you'd like to hear me say it. I wanted to say it since the moment I saw you. The, <laughs> the commitment this movie has to the cool, the cold passion, is just so insane. It's crazy. This is not the direction that movies usually go. Its commitment to this version of love is just... It's so unique. She thanked me for revealing the truth to her. She hoped that Stephen would remember her without bitterness. It's pretty cool. I wonder what size model they used to actually get the waves to look that realistic. Time that has no faith. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. There's the last fragment. It's finished. That was a really interesting experience. Very individual experience. Uh, I, in, in my mind or in my experience, it feels like a religious experience it feels like a passion or religious kind of ecstasy or uh, sublimation uh okay so i want to kind of get the i kind of want to get the uh weird stuff out first like the kinks or the bad stuff i i think this uh this movie was uh, a little bit awkward with its floweriness the aspects that are trying to represent the 17th century the aspects that are trying to represent the poetical vision of love that uh the flying dutchman has for his for for pandora the kind of references to uh greek myth at times is a little bit um overwrought and perhaps not the greatest fit for the movie i get that there's a kind of natural disconnect that the movie draws because it's trying to pull together so many different eras and it's perhaps my modern sensibility that thinks that uh it needed to make more concessions to be in the time that it is that it's in rather than uh yearning so much for the time that was i guess like a good example would be kate and leopold that <laughs> the the movie isn't overwhelmed by uh leopoldish dialogue and tries to stay modern uh and I will concede that this movie is really probably not going to be for everyone. It's very, very strangely uh, plotted. It's very strangely paced. This is, I would, I, I might say that James Mason is not the most um, alluring romantic lead in this movie that people would necessarily want. Um, I But that's what I would say for james mason in general that he makes for a very strange romantic lead but that's what's part of his appeal like he's very very different from what you want in a partner in like uh a star's board for example but there's a contingent of the audience that's like if when they see that they're like that's really what i want or that's really something that is um familiar to me or in the seventh veil for example i'd love to do a video on the seventh veil it's an insane movie it's incredible uh but he portrays a very 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 problematic kind of love in that movie but if you watch it in terms of your emotions in terms of the things that you that resonate with you or the things that you respond to like i find his relationship in the seventh veil so so problematic and there's the part of me that's also like i completely understand the choice that the female lead in that movie makes, regardless. Um, this, to me, didn't feel like a 
uh, a romance movie in the sense of like, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. The, the movie draws a distinction between mania and coolness between mania and I'll, I might even say depression or, um, what's the word? or supplication, or supplication, um, two different modes of love, and on one side you get what's presented in most rom-coms, what's presented in most um, musicals, what's presented in most um, love stories that are being told. It's the manic kind of love, the love that's that leads your p blood pressure to raise, that your heart can't stop beating when you see a person. It drives you to do insane things. It's um, all con an all-consuming flame. That distinction is represented in the film by the, the, the other suitors of Pandora. It's represented in the first scene by the interaction of the flamenco dance and the, um, and the piano ballad uh, the, and the piano piece. <laughs> And what this movie is trying to represent, in my view, is the um, supplicant version of love, the devotional part of um, uh, version of love, the like ego death version of love. And it's very, very scary in that presentation with how um, far it's willing to go, how far it's willing to realize this version of love as a kind of ego death, as a kind of um, as a kind of sacrifice, as a um, being in proximity to death, being charitable, being supplicant, being sacrificial, being cool and cold, and almost unapparent. It's a very private, it's a very private presentation of love. Um, and uh, I guess like, romance movies it would make me think of like I, I guess like the tragic romance movies you would think of it, it's like portrait of lady on fire although i think portrait of lady on fire is actually kind of warm but it's like it's i'm trying to explain like m m movies where love feels like a religious fervor something where so much of yourself is given up um voluntarily you give yourself over to this thing um, and again, I, I'd say that's complicated by the aspect of this. That is like, this is fate. This was determined from the beginning, but seeing how much, uh, Pandora gives herself over to this pro to this process, to this event, to this feeling is such a frightening, but recognizable, uh, process to witness. It's, it's like witnessing a martyrdom. It's so beyond the scope of your rational understanding of the world but in that extreme it represents a version of love um yeah i was deeply moved by this movie and like deeply deeply frightened by this movie this was such an intense intense depiction of love and it, it felt like a religious work to a certain degree and in that it it manages to balance so many different aspects where um, it made me appreciate this love. It made me fear this love. It made me, uh, it made me almost like cry out against the God of this world, the God that is so uh, cruel and so, so apathetic because the, the movie pivots it. The story pivots it that, uh, the hell that these characters live in is through their own volition. It's through uh, some sort of lack of devotion that 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 Hendrick displays early on in his life. Uh, it's a kind of lack of certainty that uh, Pandora possesses that prevents them from realizing their love and. This this is a god that's created a world in which the only self for these two characters, the uh the the 
the salvation, as Hendrik puts it, is in their deaths. That's such a bitter story to tell, but in its bitterness, I think it also represents real life. Um, this movie made me so angry at the god that puts them in this position, but um, but also their ultimate sacrifice and their ultimate um, consummation of their love is one of the more uh, cathar cathartic or revelatory or fear-inducing experiences I've had watching a movie. Uh, another example would be um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Uh, I think a lot about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon as like a romantic movie and about uh, and a movie about um, growing older and about uh, denial and about um, admittance or acceptance. And I think there are aspects of that in this too. This felt like um, loving and caring for a, a loved one who's terminally ill it felt like being in love with somebody at the end of your life, it's conjured a lot of very strange, frightening emotions for me. That's it's it's a weird combination for me to experience in a movie. Yeah, I don't know. I um I I'm gonna take some time. I, I really enjoyed this. I think it's worth a watch, certainly. Um you should you should watch this if you don't like it i really understand that perspective especially if you've only watched it once i i would really really uh understand not really jiving with this movie if i hadn't made the connection that i did on 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 an initial viewing um i would encourage you if you've seen this before and you didn't really resonate with it to to maybe watch it again see if you get something else out of it um it had Apart from those aspects, it also has like great cinematography. It has great actors. I was surprised by the emotional weight that Ava Gardner carried in this movie. And it has a so-so script. <laughs> yeah, that was Pandora the Flying Dutchman. I need to go lie down. <laughs> Please leave a comment of what you thought about the movie. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time... Keep watching good movies. Keep watching great movies.